Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. Back on October 6th, a ULA Atlas V launched the first two prototype satellites for Amazon's Project Kuiper, an effort to launch ultimately over 3,000 satellites into low Earth orbit to provide high-speed internet to users. Sound familiar? Yeah, it's basically a competitor for Starlink. Now, while we know a great deal about Starlink satellites, and SpaceX themselves have shown illustrations of what those satellites look like, not to mention various pictures of the satellites prior to launch, and of course we have pictures from the ground of the satellites in orbit, thus far Amazon have kept a very tight lid on the appearance of their Kuiper satellites. Based on my limited searching, I really can't find much information about how their specifications stack up against SpaceX's Starlink satellites, or even what their physical dimensions are once fully deployed. This video presents what is, to my knowledge, the very first public images of a fully deployed Kuiper satellite. I tracked both of the prototype satellites earlier this morning using my SatTracker software, and this is the Finder Cam video while I'm waiting for the satellites to exit Earth's shadow, tracking purely based on the orbit. The first satellite exits Earth's shadow, and you can start to see it appear there. I click on it, and the program locks onto it and centers it for the main camera to view through the main telescope, which was an 11-inch Celestron next star. I'll now show you the video recorded by the main camera, which was a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K, you can see that although the program gets distracted by some similarly bright stars, I quickly lock onto it again to keep it in the main view. These segments are missing from the main camera view because the program I used to stabilize the video also truncates any frames where the satellite is not in frame and only selects the very best frames to be kept in the final video. After a short period tracking the first satellite, I disengaged the lock and started to slew the telescope to the second satellite. Now, prototype number two was actually leading the pack there, and then I moved over to prototype one to begin tracking that satellite. So we'll first look at the up-close video of prototype two. I'm going to loop the video of prototype two a few times. You can see that it immediately appears as an elongated shape, not just a point of light in the sky the way the finder camera saw it. But this elongated shape appears to rotate clockwise over the course of the video. This is because we're viewing the satellite from an altitude azimuth perspective that is not rotating parallel with the plane of its orbit. If we look back at the finder camera video one more time and speed it up a bit, you can see how the satellite is initially rising, passing the highest point of the sky, and then descending. This parallels the apparent orientation change of the satellite in the main camera. Now you might be saying to yourself here, what's the big deal here? It's just a small little shape, but you can't really tell anything about it. Well, it's more than a point like light source. We can actually see the extended shape of the satellite, and we can start to make some measurements based on that. With the finder camera video, all we saw was a dot against the stars, but at this magnification, we can actually see that elongated shape, which gives us information about the minimum length of that solar array that it deployed. We know that the pixel scale here is 0.1 arc seconds per pixel. We're actually oversampling the telescope's capabilities. But this allows us to make a measurement of the satellite. So if we take a few of the best frames from the very peak of the pass and stack it, we can get a better quality still photo. If you look at the longest part of the object, you can notice a slight amber tinge to it. That seems to be the main solar array, and this makes sense. It's 74 pixels long, and given an angular size of 0.1 arc seconds per pixel, we get a total angular size of this feature of 7.4 arc seconds. This was at the very peak of the pass, when the slant range was 503 kilometers away from my telescope. If we do the math, this gives us a solar array wingspan of about 18 meters, and it might truly be even a little bit bigger than that, depending on the orientation of the spacecraft. But that gives us a good starting point to work with, and this is actually a fairly reasonable value. According to what I was able to find on Reddit, the original Starlink satellites had a solar array wingspan of about 11 meters. The newer Starlink V2 minis that they're currently launching have two solar arrays and a total solar array wingspan of about 30 meters, so this falls right in the middle of that range. 
Of course, the width of the solar rays might be different between these new Kuiper satellites versus Starlink satellites, so it may not be a perfectly apples to apples comparison in terms of the total solar array area, but this gives us some idea of where the capabilities of the satellite might fall. Lastly, I'll show you the video I captured of the trailing satellite, Kuiper Prototype 1, which was flying behind Kuiper Prototype 2. Now on this satellite, I was playing with the focus, trying to find the best possible focus, so that's why it turns into a donut shape at times as I hunt for the focus. It also lost the lock here and there, so there's some time jumps from that as it was distracted by nearby bright stars. I would estimate that the brightness of these satellites puts them at about apparent magnitude 3 when they were hitting their peak of about 70 degrees of elevation over the horizon. So that gives you some idea of how bright they're going to be. Not super bright, but not super dim either. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, clear skies.